Bro, this episode was, this is, uh, I'm not even gonna lie, this is probably the best piece of content I've ever seen on Disney+. Plus. This episode is so good, especially after last week's episode, me not being a big fan of it. This episode really just dives into everything. We get back to the TVA, we get answers to our questions, huge, mind-blowing reveals, cameos, and... So many different things that I, I mean, j- I, I, we have so much to talk about, so much to talk about, but guys, if you have not seen this episode yet, you need to watch it ASAP, as soon as possible, because there's so many things in this episode that can be spoiled for you, and I don't want to do it for you, so if you haven't seen the episode yet, don't watch this video, I'm about to spoil this thing so much, so I, I don't want to spoil it for you, uh, but hopefully, if you're still here, you have seen the episode, because, again, there's so much to talk about, and we're going to talk about it all, and so much more. Oh, it's going to be so good. But before we get into doing that, guys, of course, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell if you haven't already, if you're a new comer to this channel. Um, I'd really appreciate that. But also, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What did you think about this episode, all of those big twists and turns? Uh, because it, it was insane. So, guys, let's go ahead and get into this. So the episode starts off with another flashback, this time for Sylvie, and it's actually her as a child when she was first brought in to the TVA. And they actually never even explain why she was brought into the TVA and what the, her Nexus event was. That was something she was questioning later on the episode when she was reunited with Ravana Renslayer. And she was asking, like, what was my Nexus event? Why was I taken to the TVA? Because really, the TVA is the reason that she went all crazy and became this villain in the first place because she literally lost her life not like she didn't actually die but she was literally taken to the tv as a child and lost the life that she was originally set to experience and like i just mentioned ravana rinslayer was here and she was actually the one that brought in sylvie and she at this time she wasn't like the head justice or like judge and jury and all that stuff at the TV at the time she was actually just a hunter just like hunter b15 and c20 so i i'm interested to see if we actually get that explained as to how she r- rose up the ranks of the TVA but then of course we get back to present day where we meet back up with mobius and ravana renslayer And the timekeepers as well, because Ravana is actually having a conversation with the timekeepers. And of course, at this point, we don't actually see them. Uh, But then she talks to Mobius, and this is where she reveals that Hunter C20, the one that we saw in episode 2, was enchanted by Sylvie, is now dead. And he's like, really? That's kind of weird, because she was fine the last time I saw her. And automatically i'm like yeah she she is very suspicious here something is going on with ravana she definitely killed c20 for probably no reason other than the fact that she was starting to uncover the truth and ravana didn't want that out there so mobius is kind of starting to question things and kind of starting to get a little suspicious but he's not quite at that point where he's really going to take action until later on in the episode when he meets back up with loki which speaking of Loki, of course, we follow up after our cliffhanger of last week's episode where Loki and Sylvie, their means of escape from Lamentus 1, is now officially gone. So they kind of just sit down on these rocks. And yes, we get that shot from the trailer where everybody thought it was Black Widow, but no, it's just Sylvie. And they basically sit there and await their death. And I think they even held hands and everything. So they are just They've accepted their fate and they are ready for it to happen. But then all of a sudden, the TVA gets an alert that there is some sort of nexus event and some sort of branch reality that has been created. So they teleport to Loki and Sylvie and bring them in to the TVA once again. And I mean, sure, it's good that they're saved now and they're alive and they weren't killed on Lamentus 1, but now they're in the custody of the TVA. And then we get... big reveal number one basically or like a giant cameo where Loki's actually put through this 
uh, he calls it like a bad memory prison. I think Mobius referred to it as a time cell where he is put through this portal and then he is stuck in a time loop with Lady Sif who is super mad at him because he cut her hair just because he thought it was going to be funny and now she's super mad at him so she just keeps p- punching him and beating him up on a time loop. So it was pretty funny but also just so awesome that we got to see Lady Sif back in the MCU. We know she's going to be returning for Thor Love and Thunder and this I remember this was actually a big rumor a while ago that Sif was going to show up in Loki and uh, I think it was really cool would have been nice if we saw more of her and if it wasn't just for this but it is cool especially because it is kind of a reference to Lady Loki because in the comics Lady Loki actually is Loki taking on the look of Lady Sif so I thought that was really cool seeing that character there and again I'm really excited to see her return for Thor Love and Thunder but Then we get to see more of Mobius and his conversation with Ravana, where things are getting even more and more suspicious here, uh, because he wants to go interview and go interrogate Lady Loki, aka Sylvie, but for some reason, Ravana won't let him, and why? Why is this the case? And he just has no idea. He even mentions this to B-15. And she starts getting a little suspicious too. Of course, because the last time we saw her, she was under the enchantment of Sylvie. So I, I we get a nice, cool, cool reference here where Mobius says, like, we, we've dealt with some crazy stuff before. We've brought in Kree, Titans, Vampires, which first ever, I think first ever MC reference to Vampire. Actually, no, because we heard the... Um, Korg uh, say something about vampires in Thor Ragnarok, but still, first official kind of vampire call out, of course, to set up for the Blade movie we're getting in a couple years. So that's super exciting. Of course, Kree, uh, the blue people that live on Hollow that we saw in Captain Marvel, and then Titan are the species that Thanos is a part of. So yeah, just imagine if we one day just saw a Thanos variant just walking through the TVA, like, who committed a crime to the sacred timeline. But now that Loki's punishment is over, Mobius takes him back to that room where we saw him in the first episode and interrogates him once again, where Mobius really wants to find out the truth and he just doesn't want to deal with Loki's lies anymore. And Loki actually says that like this whole thing was his plan and it was his idea and Sylvie's just a pawn, which I mean, he's 100% lying there, but then he does actually tell the truth when he drops that bomb on Mobius that... Yeah, everybody here at the TVA, they're all variants. And of course, Mobius doesn't believe them because he is 100% loyal to the TVA. It's what he's known his whole life, or at least this part of his life. So he doesn't believe him, and he closes the case and sends him to get back in the time cell where he's beat up by Lady Sif once again on loop repeatedly. But this does definitely get Mobius thinking. So then he starts questioning Ravana, and he's like, what is going on here? Are, like, is this true? Was Loki lying? And you can tell that she's pretty sus here. Something is going on with Ravana. We don't know what she's hiding, but we definitely get some interesting reveals later, uh, where, first of all, actually, B-15, she actually helped Sylvie escape, because, again, the last time we saw her, she was under the enchantment of Sylvie and we know that the way her enchantment works is that she gets to see the memories of her past life before she was a variant at the TVA so she she starts questioning things as well and she asks Sylvie to show her again and she's like I I was happy and she's she automatically becomes on the good side she's no longer siding with the TVA so really cool that she's joined the the light side and has stepped away from the dark side now But then we see Mobius again, where uh, before he actually leaves Ravana's office, he actually steals this device from her, where he then goes to the library and looks a little bit into the death of C-20, where he sees her debriefing, where he sees that she actually was revealing all this stuff about her past life before she was a variant at the TVA, and that is when Mobius realized, like, oh my god, this is actually the truth, Loki wasn't lying to me this time, and we're all variants. In an alternate timeline, I'm riding around on a jet ski. So, of course, he goes to get Loki because he doesn't know who to trust. And Loki is probably the last person he thought he could trust. But he knows that Ravana Renslayer, is very suspicious. He can't trust her anymore. So, Loki's really the only one that he can trust. So, he goes to save him and rescue him. But on their escape, 
the TVA shows up, including Ravonna Rinslayer, and she's like, prune him. And they do. They straight up murder Mobius. They killed off Owen Wilson. So sad. I I mean this this was a, this was another huge thing in the episode that was like so shocking. I did not think they would kill him off. Although I doubt he's actually dead. He's most likely coming back. Uh, but it 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 was just such a big crazy moment that I was not expecting for them to actually do that here in this episode, along with a couple of the other things that happened in this. But this is where things really get kicking off because there's only like 10 minutes left of the episode at this point. I'm like, all right, all the big stuff happened now. I'm ready to move on. It was a great episode. But then Ravonna Renslayer takes Loki and Sylvie to meet the Timekeepers. And yes, we do finally actually see the Timekeepers in all their glory. Uh, Or, I guess, nastiness because they, they really do not look good. And basically, the timekeepers just wanted to see, oversee the deletion of Loki and Sylvie. So that's what's about to happen. They're about to get deleted when all of a sudden, B-15 shows up. She's coming to the rescue. She brings in the daggers for Loki, both of them. And she saves the day and frees them with their collar and stuff. So now they can fight their way out of this. And because they're both Lokis, because they're both cool, of course, they use the power of teamwork to take down everybody. And in the end, they do come out on top. And she, like, Sylvie actually beheads one of the timekeepers. She throws one of her daggers right up there. The head comes off. And that is where we get another big reveal where we find out that the timekeepers are not real. They're actually robots, or at least these ones are not real. And this is another big theory that a lot of people have been having, but it, uh, and it answers so many questions, but also sparks so many of them as well. Because it's like, all right, so the timekeepers are not real. They were fake the whole time. But if that's the case, then who is actually in control of the sacred timeline? Because it can't just be Ravonna Renslayer. She seems definitely like a pawn. So... Looking like maybe Kang the Conqueror, maybe. Hopefully, fingers crossed, because we know Jonathan Majors is going to be playing him in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. So this would literally be the perfect show to set him up in. And I think that's the big theory going on right now. Let's hope it doesn't turn out to be the Mephisto of the show and end up being nothing. But I, I I think it's Kang the Conqueror. It's the one that makes the most sense. But then after this reveal, Loki and Sylvie actually aren't really even this surprised. And Loki even takes the moment to uh, have this conversation with Sylvie. And he's like, I need to tell you something. And it looks like he's about to reveal his feelings for her and that he's in love with her. Which, by the way, is another weird thing because they're the same person. So, like, he's in love with himself, which is kind of cool and makes sense with the character, but also kind of weird. So, like, I... I... Personally, I'd like to see them get together, and I think that'd be pretty cool, but at the same time, it feels weird saying that, because it it's almost like they're, like, brother and sister at the same time, so it's it, it's kind of incest, but at the same time, I don't really know the logic of all this variant stuff. It, it's it's kind of crazy, um, and also kind of weird, because I just saw the other day um, that either the producer or head writer somebody that was like in charge of this series was asked if uh loki and sylvie were actually going to have a romantic relationship in the series and they were like no they're just friends it's going to be a brother sister dynamic but then you see this episode and it's like uh i that that's not very brother brother sisterly uh at, at least not the kind i know of i mean i don't know what you've been doing with your siblings but i i i i think that's kind of weird But anyway, Loki doesn't actually get to profess his feelings for her because all of a sudden, Ravana shows up and prunes him. And Loki dies. Or so we think. And this was another crazy moment. And this was the moment where I realized, like, all right, there's no way Mobius is dead either. They've got to be alive or they're coming back to life some way. And uh, that just gets me really excited. I mean, again, it was such a huge, shocking reveal. Like, you don't expect the main character to die in his own series, but it literally just happened. And so that was just honestly kind of insane. And then, uh, of course, Sylvie being the badass she is, is able to take down Ravana though. And she's got like that uh, deletion stick pointed at her. And she's like, tell me everything. And that is where the episode ends. So we know Sylvie's going to be getting some answers next week. Hopefully when it comes to her past, the Nexus event, when, when and why she was taken to the TVA and all that good stuff. But then... Then, ladies and gentlemen, we get a post-credit scene, a pretty crazy post-credit scene that I was not expecting. 
Because we pop up with Loki, who, first of all, we find out is not dead. He's just somehow been transported to this other realm or something like that. So that confirms that everybody that is deleted and everybody that's pruned is not actually deleted. They're just sent to this alternate reality or something. And then this is where it gets even crazier because then when he wakes up, uh, somebody says, you need to come with us if you want to live or something along those lines. And at first I'm like, who is that? And then all of a sudden they flash over and we see... The Loki gang, that's right, hashtag Loki gang going on here, where we literally have a group of Loki variants that most likely have probably gone through the same thing that our Loki has, probably going through the TVA, finding out the truth, and most likely getting pruned. So, let's do a quick rundown on the characters we have here. First of all, Richard E. Grant as classic Loki, wearing the actual classic comics accurate Loki outfit and costume from his original appearance in the comics that is so awesome we've been hearing rumors that Richard E. Grant was going to be playing classic Loki in the series and at the time we had no idea what that meant whether he was going to be just like an older Loki and some of us even thought he was going to be one of the villains of the series but no well maybe he actually is but he is part of this Loki gang and he looks so ridiculous but so cool at the same time and I think that is just so awesome, especially continuing the trend after WandaVision, where we got those comic accurate suits with their Halloween costumes for Wanda and Vision and that. And now we're getting this comic accurate Loki suit with Richard E. Grant in this. So that was awesome. Then we have Kid Loki, who is another one that was rumored to appear in this series. He's played by Jack Veal. I remember I did a video about this a couple months ago about a rumor of Jack Veal being cast as Kid Loki in this series. And here he is. He is Kid Loki. And of course, this is huge news and huge stuff for the future of the MCU because most likely he's going to become a member of the Young Avengers, which we know is also being set up hugely on Disney+. Plus. In WandaVision, we got Billy and Tommy, aka Wiccan and Speed. The Falcon Winter Soldier gave us Eli Bradley, who's going to become Patriot. And now we've got Kid Loki, which is just absolutely insane. And then quick shout out to Crocodile Loki, who was uh, actually in Kid Loki's arms. And yes, that is a Loki variant because he it had an actual crown or like the Loki helmet and horns on. So definitely reminds me of like Mrs. Kipling from Jesse, but with a Loki helmet. So that was awesome. And then finally, we have a character that was listed in the credits as Boastful Loki. And he was played by Diobaya... Apare, I probably pronounced that wrong, sorry about that, um, but he, again, he was listed as boastful Loki, uh, but then he also had kind of like a makeshift Thor kind of hammer, so I have a feeling that maybe he's almost like, uh, like an amalgamation, like a combination of Loki and Thor, which I think is pretty cool, so I'm excited to see that, and guys, this is just huge, we literally have a gang of Lokis right here, and most likely they've all been pruned. We know our Loki was pruned. That's how he ended up here. So most likely, likely that means Owen Wilson's Mobius is going to show up here as well. He's coming back. Wow. Yeah, I'm so excited for this. Guys, it was absolutely insane. Wow, this is a long video. Probably one of the longest videos I've ever done. But that was because this was such a good episode. And I am so hyped for next week's episode. We got so much next week with not only a new episode of Loki, but also Black Widow. And there's only two episodes less left of this Loki series, or at least season one. So I am so freaking excited for this. It was, This was an insane episode. So many huge reveals. So much setup. Loved it. But guys, let me know down in the comments below, what do you think about all these big reveals? Do you think Ken the Conqueror is coming and what other Loki variants do you think we'll see in these last two episodes so guys thanks so much for watching please drop like if you enjoyed this video and hit the subscribe button so I keep you up to date on everything goes on in the Marvel life